for. Is this Moira speaking? Yes, it is Moira speaking. Hello. Uh, this Hello. Is Kirk Allen. So, uh, Hi, Kirk. It, the committee members that have, have introduced themselves are Moira and who is the other person? I don't know who else. Leslie Paulus. Leslie Paulus yeah, joined. Okay, the first six introduced themselves, and now we have Moira. You started to introduce yourself already, and so has Leslie. So uh, I think we can start now. Um, uh, do we need to introduce the, uh, the non-committee members? Uh, or or we, we can pretty much see the list on, on, our, our, on our computer screen. So uh, unless somebody wants to announce their presence. Okay, so um, uh, welcome to the, I guess, I don't know, we call this the fall meeting since it's September. Um, I'm glad people decided to join us. Um, it's been a little bit disappointing that that uh, the product, the project, I'm sorry, the pro, the pro, the progress this committee is making is has been truncated by the fact that the uh, the Senate adjourned before the legislature adjourned before they could uh, enact anything. Um, but I think we just need to pick it up now where we were. So uh, that's my introductory comment. Um, so I think we start next with committee business. I don't think we have any subcommittee reports. I don't think there are any subcommittees. Oh, okay. Approval of minutes. Uh, who's got the minutes? Uh, Wendy, do you have the minutes or who's got the minutes? They presumably were not. I don't think we, I don't think we have minutes from the last meeting other than the recording. I think uh, if we were gonna have uh, written minutes, it would start with this one, with the post uh, bylaws approval. Would be my guess. I don't know what your thought is, Wendy. Okay, if there are um, no there, there are minutes, how, it's hard to approve them, and I mean they would have to be distributed yeah. presumably. So, <laughs> I guess we haven't approved the minutes. Is the point? Vacancies. Who, who left the committee? Who, who left the committee? Do we know? I actually do have somebody who left. Um, this is Wendy. Um, let me pull it up really quick. Sorry. I believe it was a parent representative so um oh is it to the person of the cystic fibrosis family um not remembering her name real well right the second anyway it's one of the parents yes <laughs> okay so how do we how do we re, how do we fill that other slot and i mean and aren't, aren't those slots designated for certain segments of the pot of the of the community uh so so are you saying that this has to be filled by another parent, uh, parent advocate? Anybody know the answer to that? So Kirk, this is Lila. Since my understanding is that um, there are certain slots that need to be filled. However, yeah. in the past, we've had more than one parent um, fill those slots and so i think that if you were to find another parent but it is some a uh, appointed position by the director of the department of health services so i think we could probably make suggestions but it's a appointed position so how how, how, how do we make those suggestions uh i mean how, how, how is that the order of business now or or oh maybe under new nominations well that's nominations probably for uh diseases not for people but w w when do we take that business up uh, to, to get that that business? Because it's not clearly on the agenda. Um, can we take it up now? That's probably yeah, a question I think so. for Ward. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, well, well then, then yeah. um, um, it, but but we don't we don't elect persons or decide. We make recommendations to who. Well, yeah, you, if you, this is Ward. You're you're more than welcome to to forward any recommendations or suggestions you have to me, and I can uh, route them from here uh, up through the through Jessica to the director. Oh, okay. For her consideration. So, uh, presumably, people that are on this meeting have some people they would like to suggest. Perhaps uh, let's have you uh, make these suggestions to Ward. Uh, and Ward will pass them on to who makes the appointment uh, again. Ward, It'll be the director. The director. Correct. Okay. All right. So uh, everybody put their thinking caps on. 
And, and am I hearing that it doesn't necessarily have to be a parent? Am I hearing that? So our um, it states that we have to have at least one parent. Um, so we do. So we, are, we do have one. So, um, yeah. Okay. All right. And can but, I, and Kirk, can I, this is Eric, can I jump in? In yeah. the bylaws that we all approved, I don't know, about a year or so ago, in section six, it looks at resignations and vacancies, and there's a paragraph there in the event of any vacancy for any reason, and it goes through what needs to be done. What does it say? Agency staff will work with the DHS commissioner to solicit applications as appropriate to fill the vacancy with a representative of the same membership category to serve the unexpired portion of the term of the vacant position. Persons who submitted applications within the previous year through DHS may be reconsidered for membership. So how many, how many parent slots do we have? Does anybody have the full list? In other words, what I'm trying to figure out is do we need to get another uh, parent uh, uh, to, to, um, to fill this slot or is it a more or it can be more of a member at large? Uh, we, uh, we'll need to see we'll need to see that list. You said it has to be from the same category. Is that what you said, Eric? Yes, yeah, so my understanding. That's, what, that the, that's what the bylaws says. Yeah, well, we yeah. need to see what those categories are. Yeah, the it's categories are found in thirty six six ninety four. <laughs> and it's also on our website. It's it's an easier way to get to it. And I can actually share my screen if you. All yeah, why don't, you, why don't you go ahead? Why don't you go ahead? Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, so, so the categories yeah, of sure membership shall include, but not limited to, at least one member from each of the following groups, parents and other consumers, primary care providers, clinicians and researchers specializing in newborn diseases and disorders, genetic counselors, birth hospital representatives, newborn screening laboratory professionals, nutritionists, and other experts as needed representing related fields such as emerging technologies and health insurance. Gee, uh, we don't have a genetic counselor on this committee, do we? Hey, Eric, where are you reading that from? That language doesn't sound familiar to me. This is coming from the bylaws. Okay, well... Oh, we crap, I just closed them. <laughs> 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 I bet you it's the um, Arizona Administrative Code or somewhere else too to be that specific. If the you know right. the, it has to come down from the governor, yeah. So so we have to get that list and 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 see uh, whether or not um, if the person that you want to nominate belongs in a category, or if uh, we've made sure there's a appropriate person from each category. Um, so. I can just tell you that I was nominated by the governor. Yes, uh, I get oh. that. The, que the, the question is, is we want to fill a position. And the question is, uh, does uh, and what I just heard now was there has to be one member from the following groups. And so th there's not a, a, a number of people that have to be from any particular group. So they don't particularly have to be two parents. Uh, the, the question is, 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 um, is it anybody that we nominate do they do they fit into any other groups and so we have to have we need to we need to have those those bylaws looked at uh you know or distributed uh and then make uh, a recommendation and i'm wondering who who can who can distribute does wendy distribute those or who who would distribute those to us um so we could then uh uh decide whether or not we have a good candidate for this position the, the bylaws should be available on the website, and that I still I'm looking through it. I don't see that language uh, in the bylaws that I that I recall about the groups that Eric mentioned, because that would be sort of I don't I find it hard to believe those would be in there because that would be outside of what's in the statute. Um, but yeah, they should be uh, they should be on our Arizona newborn website. Okay, so uh, I, what I what I see here, advisor committee, the, the de director appoints the members of the committee to include. This is what's on there now. Um, mm -hmm. Seven physicians, 
neonatalist practitioner, audiologist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so so, do you agree with this language, Ward? That's on the screen. Yes, that's my that uh, tracks with uh, my understanding of what we you know directly from the uh, uh, from the statute. Okay, uh, from my point of view. Uh, I wish I could take a screenshot or something uh, so I'd have a, a record of this for my own use. But um, if anybody has somebody they would like to recommend and then fits in one of these categories, please make a recommendation through Ward. Does that about cover it? Um, I do believe that uh, this is Ward. I do believe that Eric was correct in that the, the at least the version of the bylaws I'm looking at, which I think are the uh, most current ones is that, uh, uh, hold on, where was it? That it should be from the same category. Uh, designations, vacancies, well, yeah, the event of a vacancy is, program staff. Says that at least one parent of a child with a hearing loss or congenital disorder. Uh, right. So we, we do have one parent, so that meets that criterion. So that, I would guess that means we don't have to confine it to a parent, although a parent is certainly welcome. Yes. Hmm. Um, I guess it's a matter of interpretation. I would have read it as you could have additional parents. Um, yeah, the language, the, the statutory language, maybe it's a little vague. Whether you could uh, uh, do board screening committee shall include the following members: um, seven positions, new news. Yeah, it, it, my my sort of reading of it. I guess it doesn't make me immediately think you could have, you know, two neonatal nurse practitioners or audiologists, but I'm not sure if uh, if it, the language, you know, sort of precludes that or not. Well, uh, let's let's make the recommendation and let the person who uh, actually makes the appointment look at the bylaws and decide what's appropriate. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> How does that sound? Uh, that sounds so, good. Let me look at this one more time here. And who, who's the neonatal nurse practitioner on our group? On our committee? I'm not, or maybe they're not here. Okay. And we have a representative from the insurance industry. Is that you, Eric? No, you're not from the in industry. You're from healthcare reimbursement, right? Access. How about me? How about me? Where do you think? <laughs> Leslie, yep, Leslie. Okay, there, there you are. Okay. All right. And what about a hospital representative? We don't have a hospital representative uh, with us, do we, today? Okay, so I think we ought to let it, I mean, uh, without more specific uh, interpretation of this, what I'm gonna recommend is everybody look at this list um, and uh, decide whether or not they have a candidate and forward it to, to Ward, uh, and Ward would pass it up to the director. All right. Yep, that works for me. Now we may be a little bit out of order in terms of, uh, you know, uh, a motion and all that sort of stuff. But I, I don't, I don't think we need a motion for that. I think it's, it's business as usual. Okay. Right. Committee vacancies. We discovered that conflict of interest disclosures. Does anybody have a conflict of interest uh, that they need to disclose? I don't think so. Okay. Let's move on to uh, item three, candidate disorder updates, RUSP update. Okay, uh, before the meeting started, uh, before everybody came in, we had a little discussion here, and it was my understanding that the RUSP committee uh, disbanded uh, under, under a sunset law and wasn't uh, re, uh, reauthorized, but uh, now I hear that they are meeting again after a one-year hiatus, uh, but the recommendations have not changed. Uh, we're, we're frozen in time for one year and no new disorders have been added to this point. Um, so that's the update I would give. Does, that, does anybody else have more information in that area? No? No? Okay. So, um, how does Rust distribute its findings, Ward? How do, how do they get their information out, or do you have to seek it? 
Uh, you, you basically the way the way I've gotten it is going on their website and they'll post uh, you know their their in the past they've posted their evidence reviews and they've posted the letters that the chair has sent to the secretary and the secretary's response. Okay, so um, so we're in the situation where uh, they they don't act actively contact us, for instance, so we have to go to them. Uh, but as I say, I I don't have any new information and Ward, you tell me that their minutes are pending, the minutes from their August meeting are pending? Correct. Okay, so oh, I, yeah. I think we can conclude that there are no updates because they haven't met for a year. <laughs> can we? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so um, the, 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 the um, Item B is new new nominations. I assume that's new nominations of diseases, not of people for this committee, right? <laughs> that's can Correct. we're in the candidate disorder updates. <laughs> okay, so so th th this is an important item. Um, uh, if, as I said before, some states use Rust uh, uh, as their recommendation. Some people say some states say as soon as Rust approves it. This is what we have to do. Uh, some states just do what they're going to do, and and a lot of states have had disorders on their panel that have not been approved by Rust as of yet. So we have to decide where we fit into that uh, into that those groups. Uh, I personally have the bias, and but it's only a bias that we should at least uh, uh, push for enactment of whatever Rust uh, recommends. So I'd like uh, discussion on that point from anybody who would like to contribute. So Kirk, this is Lilas. Um, it sounds like the the legislation that was being um, offered up last year included the RUSP. Um, it did. And it, it makes sense that it the RUSP becomes automatic, automatic, otherwise it takes so long to make changes. Um, but I'm hearing you also say that there may be other disorders that you would want to include that weren't on the RUSP yet. And if that's the case, that should be included into the, the bill when it's resubmitted as well. So we may need to make that recommendation if it, all, if it doesn't already include that. Well, that's, that's what this item is. It, it, are there new nominations? Um, I don't know. I, this, this is a complicated one because it has to do with the capacity of the laboratory uh, to handle new things. Now, if, if we say, if, if, we, if we open it up like that and the state says, um, um, well, if we make a nomination of that something's not, not on the RUSP, for instance, uh, how, how does the state figure out how to pay for all of this? Um, Ward, I'd like your, your comments on this. For instance, if we went outside of, uh, if, if we didn't want to do, if, if we wanted to nominate some new disorder that's not on Rust, for instance, uh, 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 MPS-1, for instance. Uh, oh, that is on the Rust. Oh, MPS, oh, it, it, so that, that must have been after, was that after uh, SMA and uh, adrenal dystrophy or before? It was before, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Okay, well, that, I picked the wrong example. Let's just pick, let's just say another an, another uh, mucopolysaccharidosis that's not on there. If we wanted to recommend it, um, um, uh, it, it, if the language says only RUSP, uh, how do we get other things if we're interested? We have to get the language into the to the uh, in, into the um, uh, to the legislature. But this is a question for the laboratory. How do you how do you cope with that? I mean, is there some sort of talk back on what you can do, as opposed to what the, what the legislature is recommending? Or if the legislature says we're going to do it, you just plain do it. Uh, I guess that depends on uh, if the legislature attaches funding to their, uh, you know, to their uh, to their bill. If there's, it, yeah. So that's I think the first consideration we would have if if the legislature or even not the legislature if the if a if a, if a candidate disorder outside of the RUSP, and I haven't looked at the, the, the language of the bill that Eric sent, so I'm not, not sure how it looks, but uh, going on our sort of previous uh, protocol, if the, 
if a nomination were submitted to the director and the director supported it and uh, you know and wanted us to add it, we would still the the funding of that would be the the main uh, consideration how we would have to deal with that. And typically, because the uh, the second fee currently is in rule and the first green first green fee is in statute, that would then require legislation of some kind to raise the funds for us to implement it. Okay. So I think funding is the is the primary. I don't want to say barrier, but that's the first challenge we would have. Right. Okay, so let's let's uh, strip this down a little bit and just say, does anybody uh, have at this point a new nomination uh, for what Arizona should be doing and there should therefore be added to uh, the bill that's going to go before the state next in the next session? I do not. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Do, how about you, John? Well, you're not a committee member, but what do you think of John? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I I don't have any um, that, that I would add, partly because I, I, I'm i skeptical, as, as someone mentioned earlier, with the way things are coming down, that there would be funding to do things. Now, that probably shouldn't be a sole driving consideration, but um you know i i think if we just get up and running with um uh, adrenal leukodystrophy and sma we're doing good right so uh, presumably let, let's say that the the language of the law says uh the the, the rusp the rusp uh will be uh will, will will be what we'll add as they come out uh but we'll only add them to the extent that we have the money to 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 do that, right? Is that is that right, Ward? I mean, the, the recommendation will be there, but if but then somebody's got to work through the finances. So if that's true, uh, I think I think we should get a little report from from the lab on where they stand on uh, the financing, et cetera, et cetera, of uh, of uh, SMA and um, adrenal leukodystrophy. Does anybody know? Uh, you know, in anticipation of those things coming through, has a cost analysis been done? Hi, this is Ward, and uh, unfortunately, Sonal couldn't be here this week. But uh, can you guys hear me? Sorry, yes. some feedback. Okay, uh, we have we have prepared cost estimates. We have actually moved forward with uh, purchasing some equipment for SMA in anticipation of the legislation passing in the last session. So. Um, there, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we had a grant last year that we were able to purchase some equipment. Um, so, but we're kind of in a holding pattern until something happens, uh, something external to us happens. Because we've was, uh, equipment, was equipment oh, purchased? Was equipment purchased? Not all of it. There was some. I don't, and I don't recall the details, but there was some equipment of some kind purchased for SMA. But I doubt it was. Uh, I doubt it was the lion's share of what we need. So. Th that would seem to suggest that the next two things we're going to put on, if the, if the if the legislature approves it, are those two things. What about the other two? Uh, so it's uh, MPS one, and what was the other one? Uh, glycan storage disease, what were, or Pompeii? So what were the other two? Pomp was it Pompeii, Pompeii, correct. And, and, MPS one and Pompeii. And, okay. So has has any financial uh, analysis been done on those two? None of those two at this point. Okay. So so what I'm hearing is 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 um, that 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 we we if, if this legislation passed, we could probably anticipate that um, SMA and ALD would go through, and then we'll be go into the business of of looking at the economics of adding the other two. Is that a reasonable um, uh, summation? I agree. Yeah. So so uh, and that that dovetails with what John said, uh, which is to take this, you know, uh, as as they come out, uh, you know, um, we, we have a backlog, in other words, we have two disorders, uh, four disorders that have been improved by Rust that, that aren't in place. We're gonna presumably ask for two uh, to, to go through, well, we're gonna ask for all of them in the sense that the, the legislation is gonna say all Rust, 
but we can plan on the, 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 the economics determining that we'll actually be screening for uh, SMA and ALD only, uh, and, then, and then start working on the other ones. Yes? It seems reasonable. Yeah. In terms of legislation, uh, John, I, I would, would recommend, if I were trying to pass legislation, I would want to pass something that says something to the effect of the Arizona Newborn Screening Program will add new disorders within some period of time, two years, three years, following their adoption onto the RUSP list. So in other words, I would trail the RUSP because I don't think we're necessarily in place to be a leader, but I, I think it would also be nice to have a hard deadline of what people are thinking that once it's RUSP recommended, then it's like, okay, now the clock starts and in some period of time, two years, three years, we do it. Well, this, so this language, so what, what, what you're suggesting is should go to the bill writer, um, whether it's Kate Brophy McGee or whoever, to, to convince her that that's the correct thing to do. Yes. Or whoever the, the other co-sponsors are. So that's a motion I second. Okay. So, um, I think a committee member better, better make that motion. I'm not a committee member. <laughs> you make that motion. You want to make the motion? Um, sure, I make the motion that we uh, make the recommendation to um, have um, whoever, I don't know if it would be you, Kirk, or if it would be um, uh, Ward that would take it uh, to the bill writer and, um, and, and make the recommendation for the language to include um, a time period, uh, either two or three years, uh, post recommendation that that it becomes um, implemented. Um, uh, Hi, this. Do I hear a second? I can second that. I'm Lilas. Okay. Somebody want to make a comment? Go ahead. Oh, uh, this was Ward. Sorry. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that. Uh, yeah, for for your suggestion that I go to the bill writer, I have uh, to date and historically haven't really been involved, and no one from the agency has been involved in uh, going to whomever is uh, writing the bills to you know try and influence uh, you know the language of any proposed bills. So let's strike Ward's name and give that responsibility to me. Um, now let's uh, but let's be a little more analytical here. How long ago did the RUSP approve? Um, uh, Pompeii and uh, MPS one, maybe three years ago. Uh, MPS one was approved in, I believe, April or June of 2015. Okay. Uh, sorry, secondary's final response was uh, February of 2016. Sorry, Pompeii was before that. Uh, that was uh, March of 2015. So, so doesn't that mean that it would be due right immediately uh, if we? try to use that language right i i depending on the the specifics of the language it could we'll certainly seem careful. possible we'll be careful how to, to or, or 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 say something like from this point forward or something instead of having to to use those right. those dates so then you'd have to have something for uh the uh, to address the ones that are still pending because we wouldn't want to eliminate those we'd have to have a mechanism to get them um implemented that, that's what I meant. That, that, that's that's actually what I meant. I meant that uh, we have to have some sort of language that allows the things that are already overdue three or four years um, to, to be to have that same deadline, uh, presumably. So, so currently uh, recommended um, implement um, within two years and going forward implement within three years. I, I like that. I, I like that language. Let's vote on it. Uh, does, this, does the person who seconded that agree with that amendment to the motion? Um, yes, I would say I would say you want to put language in there saying um, no later than three years or something like that, um, so that they could implement much earlier if they wanted to or if there was a good reason to do that. Right. Um, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, discussion on the motion. This is Lilas again. Um, 
I would also think along with that, you probably would want to address the funding um, because that's going to create a, a barrier if they have a mandate to do um, the screening, but they don't have the funding figured out. And so I know that the newborn screening funding has been problematic for 15 years now or so. Um, and it, it's always been tied to having to reopen the statute for that first screen. And so there may, may be important at this point in time to actually make a recommendation that they clean up the funding and, and have the funding not require going back into the statute each time, whether that's a paying for, for the screening kits or if it's um, putting it into rules or, or some other mechanism, but that should probably be addressed at the same time. Would they have to change the ARS for that? Um, if they change the statute, yeah, they'd have to change the, the rules as well. But right now, right now, one of them is in rules and the other one is in statute. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I think, I think that's correct. Isn't yeah. that correct? Well, uh, so this kind of a sweeping overhaul then um, to get to, to, to get the uh, the statute changed, and so the rules are in line with it, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so, so we'd love that, of course. <laughs> so you won't have two two different barriers that you have to work through. Um, what did, does anybody know what the language of the bill uh, that was before the the legislature last year, how, how it looked at this? Uh, did, did, it, did it say anything about funding? Or was it just, we should do this? I don't know. I think we could look. The other way of doing this would be to, to have a discussion with Kate Brophy McGee on her recommendations, how to um, tackle the issue of both the funding barrier and the lag in implementation uh, for the Rust and see what she thinks is realistic. She may not be willing to take this on if that's until after the election, assuming that she she wins. Well, she can't take it on until after the election anyway, because it, they don't meet until January or something. But but you're, you're right. Uh, Any thing we go to her with uh, assumes that she's going to be reelected. If that doesn't happen, then we're back to square one, uh, presumably. Uh, but you know, as I, as I think about this, uh, we're trying to to get into the machinations of the legislature, and the person that we talk to at the legislature is going to have a much better idea of how we should do it. Maybe the language that we have, um, you know, should, rec <laughs> should recognize that. Um, I, I hear the motion, and I, I I guess we should still go forward. With, with discussion of the motion, but you can imagine where the legislator would say, well, this, you know, this isn't realistic. You need to do X, Y, and Z, and then we may have to come back and look at it again. Kirk, we have a, Hi, Kirk. We have a um, offer from a community community member to go to the legislator legislature with you. It's a uh, an offer from somebody who's registered as a lobbyist. Uh, and, and is that is that what uh, that what, what does? Yeah, le lo lobbyists go to legislatures all the time, right? Is that not what they do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 if you'll give me the name of that person at some point, and then we'll get together. And uh, I, I don't know. Wait till after the November elections, or if Kate broke McGee's shoe in. I mean, I just I don't have any idea about that. All right. Although I think she is my Hi, senator. Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kirk, Kirk and Lyles, this is Ward. Um, yeah, I'm just I, I'm operating from a position of how the the um, the advisory committee was was structured prior to the bylaws and everything. But typically, this you know things dealing with pending legislation wouldn't be coming from uh, from you all in an official capacity as advisory committee members. It would typically be you as individuals, as opposed to I, I know the motion is is on the table to. Um, to to do something related to proposed or pending or proposed legislation, and it seems a bit maybe a little bit outside of the, scope. the official scope of the advisory committee. So we could so I could go as a private citizen. In other words, I would I would announce myself not as chairman of X Y and Z committee, but as a private citizen and and, uh, and go with somebody else's. Would that get around that problem? 
that's my understanding. That's how we sort of had, had recommended handling it in the past. So, so I withdraw my motion then. So is well. Let's that before you withdraw the motion, um, Leslie. This is Lilas. Um, what I'm wondering is if we should be changing that recommendation because I think it is within our scope to make recommendations to the director of the Department of Health Services. So maybe we just need to change it to make that recommendation to the Department of Health Services director rather than to the legislature. Uh, I, that, I, I think, think that would be one. And then we could go yeah, quietly on our way to talk to the legislature as private citizens. Okay, so, so the language- I think that works too. So the language should be altered, uh, Leslie, um, th th that uh, that if anybody from this committee uh, would be uh, requ requested to go to the, the, the state director of health. I guess that's Kara Christ, right? Correct. Yeah. So you want to change that, uh, or you want to withdraw that, or do you want to change it, uh, Leslie? We'll change it. Okay. All right, further discussion on this point. And um, Ward, you said that was gonna be a big job. Is that what I heard you say? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, say that again, sorry. You that's gonna be a big job to do all this, to do this stuff? I don't know. Uh, I think oh, well, it, what we get paid for. <laughs> seems like an easy job to go to uh, the state director. Of course, the last time I, I didn't get to meet with her, I met with, uh, two of the people she asked me to meet with, but that was okay, it got up to her anyway. I imagine she's got her hands full. If, you know, it's gonna be hard getting any of her time. Um, right. But um, I'll be glad to do that. Um, is, is somebody getting that language down exactly for, for the record? Is, uh, we're recording this, so we'll have that language down. So I, I, I act within, uh, you know, the, the motion. And number two, I'll need the name of the, the lobbyist that, uh, that at some point, um, Lilas. Okay. I so already I can, two. Okay, so I can conclude uh, that uh, we have no new nominations um, per se, uh, but we do, the, the language we're gonna forward is going to be, uh, be consistent with the RUSP. Uh, with with some sort of time limits. Okay, uh, current nominations update. Okay, I guess we can talk about the current nominations are really uh, adrenal leukemia dystrophy and SMA. And uh, Ward pretty much said it. Um, they've 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 done a financial analysis, and we're gearing up for doing it if the, if the, if the legislature passed it. Now, the, the, Ward, would you say? Uh, that it that that those activities are still intact, or or does the fact that the legislature didn't meet or grants ran out or something like that makes it not uh, not complete anymore? Uh, it's more it's it's more a sense of it's just kind of stopped where it's at. We're not losing ground. It's just we, you know, had the legislation passed, we would have continued with our plan, but since it didn't, we're just sort of stopped. I mean, we're not returning any of the equipment we bought or anything. We're just uh, we're just in a holding pattern. Okay, so the current nominations update is um, ALD and uh, SMA are, uh, they've been worked on by the lab uh, and we're pe it's pending legislation, I guess is the simple way to say it, right? Did, did, yes, did, yes. Did, did it look like there was adequate funding to do those things, ALD and SMA? Uh, to be honest, I'll have to look back at the, uh... I have to look back at. I haven't looked at the Senate bill in such a long time. I don't recall exactly what it said. But but what I'm getting at here is is uh, is it something the state lab thinks it can do? I mean, uh, are we going to pass a law on the state? Oh, lab? oh. What? Oh yeah, sorry for S XALD and SMA. It's certainly that was our plan. Our plan was to to be able to do it. I don't recall any any barriers outside of funding that would uh, stop us from being able to implement those. Okay. So, so th the way this all distills down to is uh, we have to re-energize or re-ask the, the sponsor to, uh, to put the bill forward again as, as it, the one that Eric suggested um, and perhaps with some language about deadlines. Yes? Okay, uh, oh, we didn't vote on, did we need to vote on that motion? 
Uh, probably. Yeah, we need to vote Sorry, Marshall. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. Let's state it, and then we'll we'll have a simple roll call vote, or not a roll call vote, but yeah, roll call vote. But but Kurt, this is Eric. As as Ward said earlier, especially for those of us who work for the state. We usually take a neutral position on any bill, and we don't necessarily get involved in terms of pending and or developing legislation other than, you know, they sometimes ask us for fiscal evaluations, et cetera. So I, I'm a little uncomfortable. I mean, again, <clears throat> individual citizens could certainly solicit the governor's office and or the bill sponsor to make sure. But in terms of our roles, I mean, uh, I don't know. I feel a little uncomfortable from my position because I'm supposed to be taking a neutral position on any legislation, even though wait, it's wait, the no, right thing to do. No, 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 no. We're we're not. Uh, 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 the bill was the 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 motion was modified to say that this recommendation will be taken to the state director. Oh, okay, the, that's fine. Then then that's okay. I, I, yeah, it's I not, thought that's what it was, but then yeah, yeah, I, I just wanted to make that clear. Right, and, and if any of us want to. As private citizens, lobby, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we're free to do so. Absolutely. Okay. And, and just for completeness for the discussion, the governor's office was very active in terms of working on alternate funding streams and opportunities to make sure that this was going to happen and that the state lab would be fiscally solvent in terms of performing the screens. So I know that the governor's office and their financial people were certainly in contact with Access and ADHS to come up with a very comprehensive financial review analysis to make sure that whatever new costs were going to be levied for a newborn screen would be enough to cover the operational costs of adding the two screens. So I mean, a lot of people were involved in a lot of discussions for about three or four months in terms of the funding for this. So there's already been a lot of groundwork developed on that. So I think it just has to be resurrected in the next legislative session. Okay. I think that's a great summary. Okay. I think uh, let's vote on the, uh, should we, could we state the, uh, the, the motion and then vote on it? So the motion is that we recommend to uh, uh, the director of ADHS uh, that there be uh, clarification in um, a bill, legislative bill, uh, for newborn screening that they implement the current recommended RUSP when, within two years, knowing that we're like four to five years behind on a couple of them. And, um, and then going forward that um, they, there is implementation within three years as funding allows. Okay, so uh, all in favor, um, I guess we could just have the ayes say uh, I one after the other and count them. And then the nays, uh, when it say nay, say nay one after the other and count them okay um so all in favor of this motion say aye 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 aye, aye. that's four um uh, does the chairman get the vote <laughs> yes five okay so uh that's five votes uh, uh so uh, it, 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 nays any nays Okay, so the motion passes five to zero. Do you with no abstains? Yeah, abstentions? Huh, okay. <laughs> I guess people have a right to be silent too. Right. This is Olga, and I am really struggling with the tech here today. I beg everybody's pardon. I, I'm a nay. You're a nay, okay. Gee, I, um, okay, I understand. A any other I'm nays? happy to elaborate if that's well, one, and I couldn't get in on the discussion. <laughs> we take the uh, the vote well I'll, I'll ask you what your nay is but uh, any other nays no okay it's five one and two presume abstentions what, what are your problem Olga with the with the, the language or, or recommendation so again let me check can you hear me yes okay um, well it, the 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 language 
of our appointments, the advisory committee's role, um, appears to me to be to work with the, the lab to recommend testing based on the RUSP. And I sort of feel like the language of this idea is, is writing us out of a job. Uh, that our job is to evaluate the Arizona population, the Arizona incidence of disease, and to try to kind of help make sure that the cost-benefit analysis that the RUSP panel did applies as well in our state. Well, what you're essentially saying is that, the, that we've, we've, we've uh, given our, our, our role to RUSP. Is what you're essentially saying, right? That, that we've, we've taken ourselves out of that role and, and, and given that responsibility to Russ, but that's, that, that is the implication of that statement uh, of what we're saying, but I, I, I think it's legitimate. I, I think, you know, this is a well, a well considered body. Uh, it, it doesn't take us out of any other business that we're trying to get involved with, I don't think. Uh, well, or, or maybe this is the only business, I don't know. When I look at what says about the reason for our committee to exist, it strikes me that our job is to help the state decide for sure that it's the right thing for Arizonans. Well, so so would you be like the language better if the, no, the language, the language is passed. The, 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 the bill is passed, um, but I, I, I wish it had said something before so we could have taken those thoughts into consideration, Olga. Maybe I should have. Yes, like, like I said, I'm, I'm struggling with the text here. I beg yeah. pardon. Okay, okay. Well, the, the motion passed. Uh, we'll, we'll just, so just, yeah, we'll there ahead. could be there could be a recommendation for amendment to the um, rec recommendation that that we um, if you could add the language if the um, if reviewed by the advisory committee. And uh, and selections of the Rusk have been um, approved, and it also doesn't uh, cover at all what would happen if we had other recommendations outside of the Rusk. Okay, so um, uh, I I don't know Robert's rules of order that well. Now that it's passed, it can't really amend it. I guess you just need a new uh, addendum of some sort, right? Is it, am I right? I mean, the, the motion is already passed. You can't, you, you can't, you can't amend it. You you can you can uh, put some make a second motion that that modifies that in some way, which I'll be willing to entertain at this point. So you're asking for a motion to add language to the previous amendment. Uh, or is it a second? I think you need to. I think it's a new mo. I think a new motion would be required. Yeah, it's a new motion. We've already passed the old motion. Um, unless you want to, you, you, you want to pass a, a motion, getting rid of the what we just passed and, and rewrite it. Uh, be better to just have a a, a motion um, to, to add that language. So, Kirk, this is Lilas. I'm not sure yeah. that we need to go down the path of of another motion. Um, I am thinking that that we still retain you know basically our job although i'm i'm perfectly okay with writing myself out of a job um but i do think that it doesn't really remove um our role in making recommendations particularly for anything outside the rusp so it doesn't really change um the non-rusp recommended Actually, that's true that's true in other words, we didn't limit to we didn't limit that. Now, what if there's something on the rust that we object to? Uh, that that's that's what you might be referring to, Olga. Well, yeah, I was sort of thinking that this is genetics, and so what if the state of Pennsylvania has a high incidence of something, and the state of Arizona has a higher incidence of something else, um, and in in kind of collaborating with the lab and what their equipment and technology is capable of doing, did we figure out that our cost benefit analysis is different in Arizona than in Pennsylvania and potentially conflicting with our USP? Um, I, I don't know what the likelihood of that is, but that's what was running through my mind. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, 
you, you know, if you look at put the shoe on the other foot, we 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 had the Navajo Nation here with the uh, skid, and uh, we ignored that all. I mean, we 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 ignored that completely, and we're last the last state in the union to to uh, put it forward. So we we weren't real good about about um, being advocates for our own special condition in the state. I don't know. It, it's a, it's a tough question, but I I would I would still think that the rest does so much good thinking about this stuff that whatever they put in should be general enough um that it applies to us as well so i i i don't i i myself don't see any need to be worried about that piece they'll put something on there that doesn't apply to us. so kirk there's um, a comment in the chat that maura is trying to make a comment yeah. and i guess nobody can hear her oh go ahead maura are you there maura Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Moira, anything for us? Maybe she was going to tell us she was leaving. <laughs> no, she said she was trying to add a comment and asked if anybody can hear her. Maybe she can type her comment in the chat. Okay, here it is. I am trying to talk, but no one can hear me. Oh, oh. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, if you can hear us. You should have a. Uh, you should be. A, you should unmute yourself. I think everybody's able to do that. If you wanted to. Oh, she's on the phone. Type, she's on if the you phone. wanted to type it into the comments, Moira, we could read it off as well. I cannot unmute myself. Okay, I'm trying to. Okay. Does she need? I to think the magic code is star sixty-two. I think if you press asterisk sixty-two, then you're allowed to mute yourself. I'm on a computer. She's not on the phone, she's on a computer. Maybe her computer doesn't have a microphone? Don't worry, my suggestions has already been asked. Okay, if you can, okay, she said it's already been asked. Okay, so I don't think we need to. Uh... Yeah, we could hear her when she started, that's true. I don't know what happened. Well, um, okay. So, uh, the point is well taken. Uh, we don't exclude uh, other activities uh, about newborn screening by 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 by. If Russ puts something up, it doesn't doesn't stop us from from forwarding other suggestions. It just makes those so, more solid and and in force. Um, of course, it's it, it, it's 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 nice because it. It becomes so automatic if, if you do, do the rust recommendations it'll be harder to get things that are homegrown in there but I, I i i don't think there'll be too much homegrown stuff so i'm not too worried about it okay Moira said she was one of the abstainers all right um anything on anything else on this anything else on this item All right, um, the next item is for candidate disorder discussion. Um, um, I guess that, that there's, a, there's a good chance to talk about where things stand now and uh, what, where, you know, where do we want to go with all this? Uh, um, does anybody have any comments about the, the four diseases that are, that are, have been recommended by RUSP and have not been enacted? Uh, I think we all agree that SMA and um, ALD are, are real good ideas. What about Pompeii and um, MPS1? Any comments? Any comments? John, you have any thoughts? Well, I think <laughs> I think we should be working on it. Um, you know, because if you started working on it today. It's still going to be a while until it's actually implemented. So, you know, I think it should be something that we're ready to do because there's enzyme replacement therapy. So there's a there's a treatment, and always before there was not a reason for to screen for many of these things because there was no treatment, but now there is, and so that, I, um, 
and from the, from the from the beginning process until the actual implementation of screening is I don't know how long fast you can do it here in Arizona, but that's a that's a two or three year process in my book. Well, the way this happened last time is we made the recommendation. Um, the director then talked with the laboratory about it. what they told me was uh, we need to we work with the lab to to get them ready to go. So that's kind of where it sits. Actually, is that we make the recommendation uh, to the to the director, and the director uh, then says um, the director then says, "Okay, lab, let's talk about this." Uh, am I speaking correctly, Ward? Isn't that isn't that the way it happened? Yes. Yes. Okay. So so that so that what that where that takes us is where do, what do we have to say about Pompe and M and, and uh, mucopolysaccharidosis one, uh, Herler syndrome. Uh, do, do we do we want to uh, ask the director to forward that, or do we want to wait until we get on our agenda what, what's currently uh, being worked up by the laboratory with the director? Get that enforced first. Uh, what are people's feeling? Uh, I, I personally think I'd like to get I'd like to get what we have first. And that the language that we've put up to the director hopefully take care of the second one. Moira says, have we as a committee agreed that we should, oh, we went away. Didn't get to the second the end of that sentence. Did anybody see the end of that sentence? Click, click on chat, Kirk. Uh, oh, well, somebody, somebody read it then to me. Because I can't. I can't seem to get chat where, where oh there it is I see it now okay <clears throat> have we as a committee agreed that we should move forward with these two diseases yes we actually did we we did at the last meeting I went and met with uh, representatives of the director they told me um, uh, the director uh, would would work with the laboratory to see if they were fiscally able to do this and made the recommendation of the laboratory. The laboratory is obviously, as Ward said, is taking it up and feels like uh, they will be able to do it if, if the legislature approves it. So that's the answer for Moira. Oh, and then she says, go forward with these two diseases. Okay, so she's she's answering the uh, what my what my opinion was, push these diseases hard and then uh, and then start again on on financing for the, the for the next two. Um, so, John, when you say thinking about this, how how do we how do you key this up? Um, you, know what, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, the, the, this this the director has to to, to direct the laboratory to to, de, to do that kind of thinking. So, essentially, we're going to be asking her to tee those up, I guess. Um, right? Oh, well, maybe 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 the language would be something like we should we should recommend those, uh, and, and so she can take start that that work um i personally think I'd, I'd like to get this one behind us first but but if somebody feels there's a greater urgency uh, i'm i'm not going to object at all no no strong opinions here huh no nobody wants, nobody wants to tell me what to do here All right. So, so just to understand, you're asking if, if the recommendation is to proceed with the two already identified and planned for, and then start on funding for the next two. Well, the question I have is a strategic one. Um, is it does it hurt or help to put another recommendation out there to the director for two more diseases without having gotten this good funding for this? So that's 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 the uh, tactic I'm talking about, uh, and I, I kind of would like to see what we have codified and then move, move then make a second recommendation at that point. Um, but I guess if, if this thing passes, then automatically uh, it's in, it's in force, you know, for that deadline to be in place. Guess the question is, how do we feel about it? Do, do we want to go. We want to push hard on Pompeii and MPS uh, in any way right now? That's, that's the question we're asking. 
Hey, Kirk, this is Ward. I just want to interrupt for a second to notify everyone that another committee member joined just now, Debbie Johnston. Oh, hello, Debbie. Welcome. Okay. She's uh, muted I, right now. So. Yeah, it's kind of hard for us to recap. Um, I guess I'll have to come out in a minute. But essentially, you know, the only thing we've gone through is that, is that uh, we, we passed the motion uh, to take to uh, the state director of ADHS uh, some minor, minor modification of the language. I'm, I'm sorry, that's not right. Take, take to the state director what we would like to do. Uh, and, um, and then it, it, as individuals, uh, we, we, can, we can lobby in any way we want about those laws. Okay, so that was just a brief summation. All right. Um, any, further, any further talk about candidate disorder discussion? Doesn't sound like it. All right. Um, you know, um, this, this, um, this agenda doesn't have anything about new business. I, I mean, are there any, any, other, any other topics people want to take up or, or are we allowed to do that? I guess we're not allowed to do that after the agenda is formed. Is that correct, uh, Ward? Yes, that's correct. So if, if there's any new things we want to talk about, they, they can't talk about them? I guess in the call of the public, if someone wanted to mention something, okay, well, the, but even the call of the public is members of the committee may not discuss the items that are not on the agenda. So I guess someone from the public could talk about something different. Uh, so we have members that are from the public in the room, uh, in this collective room, so they, they can, if the committee members will have to zip their lips, but other people can, can certainly talk about if they've got some, some major concerns at this point. Legislative updates. Um, is there any other legislative thing that we want to be working on here? Uh, we've, we've sort of given you the update where, where we stand. Uh, Eric did that at the very beginning, showing us language that's going to go forward, presumably from Kate Brophy McGee. Uh, is there anything else um, for the for this legislation that we need to talk about? Not sure that's much else besides what we've already talked about, but you know, um, maybe somebody feels differently. Okay, uh, nothing there. Call to public. Okay, for those members who aren't on the committee, <laughs> are there some things you'd like to discuss? No. It's less a call. Can I just ask if that agenda is a mandated agenda, um, or can it be modified to to add in the future um, new business or open uh, new issues or something to that extent that could be put onto the agenda? Yeah, uh, that, that's a. Uh, isn't there some rules about the agenda has to be in form, and then you, you really can't change the agenda to any degree. Uh, on, on the date of the meeting, is that something like that? Yeah, that's correct. However, that's my understanding. And oh, go ahead. I was just going to point out that Wendy solicited agenda business in her organization email. Okay. All right. So, so that, so that, that if there was new business, so to speak, uh, that's that's where it would have gone through, and people had something they wanted to bring up. Now, you know, sometimes we will get a bright idea. Or, Current events have changed. It'd be nice to be able to bring it up, but I, I think I think the law precludes that for some reason. Okay, um, I guess we're done. Um, is there? I mean, is there anything in the agenda that we've missed that needs to be gone back over, or anything like that? For my own, for my own, um, I, I need two things. Uh, uh, Eric or Ward or Wendy, which is, uh, I'd like to see the language of the new bill, and I'd like to see the uh, the bylaws, and 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 those are those are available on this. They should be available. The, the bylaws should be on the state website somewhere. The bylaws are on the state website. Okay. What I shared with you is just a draft. It's not going to be. It'll probably when the bill is actually dropped, probably in November or a. December, the language may actually look different. 
So this was the proposed language that my legislative liaison could find. It does not mean that this is what the dropped bill is going to actually look like, but we can share that with you. Who who made those changes to the to that language? Where where they come from? Who made those? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that with my legislative yeah. liaison. But he did some research, and this is what he came up with with the proposed language that people are still working on bills that will be prepared to drop. So the, the, are you telling me now that bills drop in November, December before the beginning of the January session? Is that what you're telling me? Absolutely. I don't know when the date is when bills can be dropped, but it is before the legislative session starts. Right. And that's why there were like 15 or 1600 bills dropped last year. Now, dropped means um, <laughs> the language. Someone is sponsoring them and that they're out for review and they'll be on okay. the uh, legislative okay. website. So, dropped is kind of an unusual word for it. <laughs> You know, drop usually means lost or something, but dropped in this case means dropped into a bin for consideration. It's kind of, yeah. Okay. Dropped into the box for yeah. people okay. to start right. considering. Right. Right. We call it dropped in the hopper. Okay. Oh, in the hopper. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, that, so that means um, that means uh, uh, we have to make this recommendation to the uh, director uh, soon, in, in September or October. So I will do so. Okay, um, I guess we're done. Unless somebody, uh, there's anything else? Okay, I'll uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Wait a minute. Before we do that, um, uh, next date for a meeting would be when? Be a spring meeting. Let me know when the award. I believe for February. It's just kind of blanket February. So um, I'll send out an email um, before the end of the year to to find out dates and things like that. Okay, so we'll likely meet again in February. Hopefully, we'll get a little bit better attendance next time. Um, but uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I second that motion. Oh no, I'll say I'll entertain one. I propose that we adjourn the meeting. Do I hear a second? This is Lyon. I can second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.